Finally, this blasted election is over. How is everyone doing tonight? It's TVB, and uh, I promised you guys this video a week ago. I made a channel update in the community tab where I said that I would make a video going over my thoughts on uh, the results for the election. Yeah, I was not expecting it to take days for us to figure out who would win the presidency. I thought we would have our answer uh, you know, Wednesday morning, but just like you know, in 2016. But no, we had to wait until Saturday to find out. And yeah, it looks like we're in for uh, four years of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Or maybe, I hear some people saying that Joe Biden will step down at some point and Kamala's going to take his place. But we'll see how that uh, turns out, I guess. And I made it back. My first year of voting was back in 2016. My 18th birthday was a month before that. So uh, I made a video going over my thoughts on the election uh, back then. So might as well do another video. Uh, going over my thoughts on this one for 2020. And uh, for those of you who are wondering, I am a registered independent. I'm not affiliated with any specific party. And uh, just like how I voted in 2016, this year, 2020, I voted third party. I voted for libertarian candidate uh, Joe Jorgensen. And I voted libertarian in 2016 as well. I voted for Gary Johnson and Bill Weld. And... Uh, I will say that out of all the political philosophies and ideologies and whatnot, I think I gravitate more to libertarianism the most because, yeah, I am uh, pretty conservative with economics, but I am pretty, uh, like, socially I'm pretty liberal. That's a whole point of libertarianism is being social liberal, economically conservative, and being pro, you know, do whatever you want as long as you're not hurting others. <clears throat> yeah, that's basically my views right there, but... I, I, I have considered registering as a libertarian, but every time I hear myself say that, I'm immediately just like, what's the fucking point? I mean, I don't know. It's like, I really can't stand the two-party system. That's the main reason why I've voted for only third-party candidates. I did vote for Bill Weld back in February during the primaries. Bill Weld was Gary Johnson's vice president candidate. He ran Republican against Trump. And the cool thing about Colorado is that it's I think it's, if, if it's, I'm not sure if it's the only state, but it's one of the very few states, at least, that lets you um, vote in the primaries without having to register as either a Republican or a Democrat. I knew he wasn't going to win. I knew he didn't stand a chance against Trump, but it's like, I agreed with, you know, everything he stood for, so, and, you know, he was the VP, uh, he was the running mate for Gary Johnson back in 2016, so, like, I knew that, like, yeah, he's running as a Republican, but, you know, he's run as a Libertarian before, so I want to support someone like that, and back in 2018, during the midterms, I voted Peter Yu for Congress, he was running Republican, I actually met the guy through the Republican club here at CSU, and, um, there used to be a Libertarian club at my school, but, uh, and I was actually the recruitment officer for it, uh, at the start of my sophomore year, but, uh, we disbanded because, like, it was called the Young Americans for Liberty. The whole organization wasn't very nice to our chapter, so we all decided to just break up and uh, lump with college Republicans because Libertarians and Republicans generally agree on the same things. Like, I say that I don't want to register as a Libertarian because I think, again, I could be dead wrong on this. I could be, you know, naive. But I think in my ideal system, there shouldn't be any parties at all. Like, people just run as individuals. Right, because George Washington, our founding fathers, didn't want there to be parties to begin with. And the presidents following Washington started making parties, and uh, he's been face palming from the grave ever since. Because liber liberalism, conservatism, and even libertarianism are not one size fits all packages. Like, yeah, I was involved with college Republicans, you know, before the pandemic hit us. And yeah, I was arguably the most left leaning person in the room. You know, I was in a room with a lot of, you know, like register Republicans and Trump supporters and people with very like right leaning viewpoints, but uh, not like even then I'd still say that majority of people I've met through the whole scene are more like moderates. You know they're center right instead of far. If that makes any sense, I like to. If you had to put me somewhere on the political compass, I know that quiz is kind of bullshit and outdated, but it's good for memes. Uh, I'd say I'm. I would like to say I'm centrist or libertarian, right? Yeah, that's how like a lot of those people are through that scene. Like, there's a lot of registered Republicans who personally are more moderate, and there's a lot of Democrats, like registered Democrats I've met who are personally moderate. And heck, I even met some registered libertarians who really are more you know right leaning than left leaning. Like they're more conservatarian, while others are more libertarian. If that makes any sense. 
And I don't want to just her as a libertarian because I see libertarians disagree on things honestly just as much as Democrats and Republicans agree with each, disagree, excuse me, with each other on certain things. It's like apparently you're not a real libertarian unless you support fully legalizing all the drugs. I've heard that plenty of times before. I definitely support decriminalizing all drugs. And I'm very happy with my home state, New Jersey, for legalizing marijuana. And I'm very happy for Oregon for decriminalizing drugs. And I definitely support legalizing weed and the not-so-dangerous drugs like acid and molly and shrooms. But I really don't want to see, like, meth being sold in dispensaries. That's, no, I think that's crazy. And it's, you know, meth is addictive and dangerous, and I don't see why some people want to legalize it. Yeah, but apparently you can't really be libertarian unless you want to legalize meth. On top of that, libertarians disagree on plenty of other things, too, like uh, transgenderism and feminism and Black Lives Matter and uh, vaccines and abortion and a lot of other issues like that. So, again, it's really difficult to know who I'm supposed to take seriously and who's just blabbering nonsense. Here's the thing. I'm not making as much as I hate both Trump and Biden. I couldn't stand either of them. Like, again, I just really didn't want to vote for them. I'm not making this video to berate or belittle anyone, or, like, scream at anybody for voting for either Biden or Trump. And I'm not going to say, like, oh, Biden's a Hitler, or Trump's a Hitler, or Biden's a commie, or Trump's a fascist. No, I'm not going to act like a child and do that. I really just want to invite you guys to an open dialogue and just get a lot of things off my chest. And it's like, you know, I said, uh, we should have a system that reflects individualism because, yeah, I'm economically conservative, but socially liberal. There are clear extremes of both those ends that I want to avoid, though. Like, yeah, I do believe in small government and low taxes and low regulations, and I do believe that government handouts make people lazy. But that's coming from a college student whose bills, food, and NSA say tuition is being paid for by his parents. So who am I to judge someone for accepting a government handout? And yeah, socially liberal, it's like, I'm very pro, you know, ending racial injustice and promoting religious freedom and LGBT rights and women's rights. And I definitely agree with, like, feminism and Black Lives Matter on a basic level. Like, you know, the basic, I think the definitions of those, like, two phrases, you know, standing up for men and women having equal rights and ending police brutality and racial injustice, I think those are very inoffensive things to stand up for, as long as you're not a racist or a sexist. But here's the thing, I really don't like what a lot of people have turned those movements into. I think a lot of these flaming liberal social justice warriors have done a terrible job of reflecting the whole, you know, love and tolerance and acceptance they say they fight for. And I'm just going to leave it off at this because I really don't want this video to turn into a rant. <clears throat> but just like being accepting and welcoming and respectful towards everyone for their religion, color, race, nationality, gender identity, sexual orientation, age, abilities, etc. That is not a conservative or liberal thing. It's a be a decent fucking human being thing. Like, why can't we just accept each other? Why do we keep making it, like, a left or right issue? Like, no, this is just, like, there are bigoted asshole Republicans, and there are bigoted asshole Democrats. Like, you know, there's horrible people from all walks and ends of the spectrum. Like, any movement or community or demographic with enough members is bound to, you know, have some bad fruit, right? All, all trees are bad apples. And, yeah, it's like... I'm really sick of how everyone is just unwilling to listen to each other. Nobody wants to just sit down and chat and be like, hey, I disagree with you. Instead of, like, I, I'm really tired of people just flipping out and being like, oh, like, you disagree with me, I hate you. Like, oh, you're a racist, you're a Nazi, or like, uh, you're a commie, you're a sellout. Like, everyone's just yelling, and everyone seems, seems more fixated on being angry and offended than they are on getting actual progress done. And yeah, it's like, I've been told, like, oh, if Trump won the presidency, like, oh, he's gonna, like, it's gonna result in the deaths of millions of people who aren't white straight males like me, because, oh, he's a fascist or whatever, yet at the same time, there are a lot of Trump supporters who, like, defend him vehemently, they'll say, like, oh, Biden's gonna, you know, just tax us to oblivion and uh, yank away our gun rights and our First Amendment rights and all this, like, other madness, and, uh, you know... I definitely will disagree with you on some things, but I definitely will defend your right to say it. And I definitely think that everyone has an understandable reason for standing by whatever opinions or stances or beliefs or viewpoints 
they have. It's like, let's be real here. Most Trump supporters don't support the wall because they're racist and they hate Mexicans. They support the wall because they want to see an end to illegal immigration and the problems that it brings. And a lot of Trump supporters are pro-life, not because they're sexist and they hate women wanting to yank away women's rights. They believe it's wrong to kill a fetus. Now, on the other hand, a lot of Biden supporters are not pro-choice because they're sadistic and love killing fetuses or whatever. They're pro-choice because they believe in the woman's right to choose, and if women don't have that choice, then abortion will just fall into the hands of criminals. At the same time, a lot of Biden supporters don't support Black Lives Matter because they're racist towards white people and think that all cops are bastards or whatever. They support Black Lives Matter because they want to see an end to police brutality and racial injustice. I'm not saying that's how I view any of those movements per se. I'm just saying that's how they view it. And here's the thing. I'm re Another reason why I vote for third-party candidates and the reason why I want to shatter this two-party system that's been, you know, like cancer in our country for centuries is because it's really brainwashed us into this whole like you're either with us or against mentality there's only two sides of every issue there's only uh like one coin with two sides we can't why can't we have a piggy bank full of coins and again it's like i'm making this video to encourage you guys to look past our differences and uh see each other individually it's like again i will respect you if you voted for Biden, Trump, or decide not to vote at all, you know, I'll respect you whether you're registered as a certain party or not. I'm going to respect you if, you know, whether you're whatever race, religion, gender identity, sexual orientation you are, I'll respect you if you're pro choice or pro life or have another stance on abortion. I'll respect you whether or not you support like gun control or I'll respect you if you, you know, uh, support gay marriage and, uh, and the trans community or not and i'll respect you if you are like vegan or eat meat or pescatarian or whatever like everyone should just be allowed to you know i, I should just do stand up for what they believe in and have those beliefs because we're promised that in our constitution but i do not respect disrespect or hostility or malicious actions fueled by said beliefs or viewpoints and it's like you know i don't care how many felonies george floyd was convicted of stomping on his throat for nine minutes is inhumane and i'm glad to see the police officers are dead at him behind bars however his death as well as Breonna taylor and jacob blake's death is not an excuse to riot and loot stores and go crazy on the streets i mean i know a lot of that's been outweighed by peaceful protesting but i've met people who think like oh yeah we should totally be allowed to riot it's what they deserve like oh stuff can be replaced lives can't so what you guys realize that business owners probably don't have the time or money to replace what they've lost after the riots. Like, and what did they do to deserve that? Why do they deserve to be punished for someone's murder they had nothing to do with? Like, two wrongs don't make a right. And, uh, <clears throat> and honestly, the past few days, I was really anxious. I was watching the polls, looking at the electoral votes. Honestly, in the back of my head, I was voting, I was, I was rooting for Biden just to win so liberals wouldn't riot and go crazy and start carnage on the streets again because i've just I, i've had it i've really had it with both sides and just their never-ending layers of bullshit and uh i'm sorry this video has been kind of all over the place i'm gonna try to wrap it up like this before the video goes on for too long if i could go back in time and say like a few months and if i could tell you know 21 year old tvb it's like oh yeah biden's like trump's gonna lose i would be f like past me would be flabbergasted like back when the back during the summer especially after biden's whole like oh you don't vote for me you ain't black comment i thought like oh trump is gonna win like biden doesn't stand an absolute chance because like oh he has too many supporters there's a lot of republicans who love what he's doing like oh the economy is I, I thought like oh because he has the first term he's probably going to win a second term that's what usually happens you know with presidential candidates and whatnot but now as the months went on just seeing how many times he's shot himself in the foot especially the way he was acting in the debates i was I, I was not surprised like on election day when i saw that biden had both the popular vote and the electoral votes and as the days went on it's like this doesn't shock me anymore because like, I think the real deal breaker was this pandemic. If Corona never happened, 
if we never had a pandemic or a lockdown or a quarantine, everything just stayed as is during this godforsaken year, I think Trump would have won. I think he would have if he I think he would have taken the presidency again, but he's just shot himself in the foot way too many times and he's handled this pandemic so egregiously for the past eleven months, like flat ignoring all the warnings and the scientists right from the beginning. And I think that was the real turning point. And yeah, so um I guess depending on who you ask, that's one of the best things that's come out of this quarantine is like, oh, if it never happened, we would probably would have another four years of Trump. So, yeah, um, I have some editing to do. I'm pretty tired, guys, honestly. I've, like, classes have just been kicking my ass lately. I've been really busy, but hopefully I'll have some breathing room soon. And, uh, yeah, so no matter who you voted for, again, I love you guys all very much. I know there's not a lot of you who watch my videos, but I'm really grateful for you guys and the views and those of you who follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And I just want to say that no matter what walk of life you come from or what, like, movements or parties you affiliate yourself with, I think it's time we all acknowledge that we have a common enemy as Americans, and that is being silenced. That is, those who want to shut our voices up just so their voice can be heard louder. And we need to, and I, I want to see another revolution. I want to see, but not in my lifetime, obviously. I mean, maybe, maybe it'll happen in my lifetime, maybe it won't. We'll see that we'll have a system in America that's just more inclusive. Like, because we have a country with 323 million people ranging from all races and religions and different types of people with only two viewpoints. That's, that's fucked up. Like, we deserve better. And, uh, yeah, that's all I really gotta say tonight. Uh, please stay respectful in the comments section. Uh, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you disagreed with everything I said tonight, give it a thumbs down. Doesn't really make a difference to me, honestly. And uh, yeah, if you haven't done so already, feel free to follow me on Instagram and stuff like that. Links in the description. And yeah, this has been your boy, TVB9. Thank you so much for watching. Stay beastly.